Good afternoon. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and how we apply this existence to our daily lives in this physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. This study is titled, Before the Cock Crows, Notre Dame, Prophetic Rooster Fitted to Spire. Noticed in my links this morning, my morning YouTube feed, and uh, emails and news uh, feeds that the golden rooster is now being fitted or has been fit to the spire of Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral. You can read about it here in the article. I have it in the description, links in the description of this video of the blog. I urge you to read that and all the background. I'm going to take a quote from this article posted and they write, the new rooster designed by Philippe Villeneuve was one of the architects leading the restoration of the cathedral, replaces the original, which was too damaged by fire to be reused. Villeneuve says the new rooster's wings of fire were a reminder that the cathedral can be reborn from the ashes like a phoenix. Now, note, in the links below, I want you to see how the first rooster, when Notre Dame Cathedral burned severely damaged uh, back in 2019, I believe it was, how the first rooster was recovered from the ashes and that they were like, they consider it to be a miracle that they'd found it because it was severely burned and was almost, almost discarded as just unusable rubble. Now that's significant in two ways. First, them even admitting it, even when they were in the rebuild, they said this could be, we'll make this like the Phoenix, a new birth, a reborn. The Phoenix is the most one of the most pronounced, uh, uh, pr uh, one of the most incredibly prophetic events here. The Phoenix itself is one of the significant symbols of the Luciferian New World Order symbols. And I'm not, the purpose of this study is not to study the Phoenix and how the Luciferian elite, how the New World Order, how the mystic cults, occultists use and talk and symbolize the Phoenix. But this is huge, going up on the top of this pagan building called the cathedral. Now, in this is all in my links below here. Now, in the Christian faith, this article, now this article writes this, I'm not saying this, they write, they continue, in the Christian faith, the rooster symbolizes the return of light after nighttime. It also is one of the symbols of France found on the stripes of the national football and rugby teams, among others, end quote. Even so-called Christian websites, like Got Questions from CARM, and that's Matt Slick. He gets it wrong, as he often does. Now, I want to make a side note on Matt Slick and Carm. This is apologetics. He started back in 1995. Be very careful when you're using God questions references. I refer to him. He does a lot of research. He does that. But he often will mix the truth in with lies, half-truths, and mixed, always he uses perverted Bible translations that will lead you astray. No wonder that he's the leading online resource of today. There's no way that the devil would allow a true man of God using the King James Bible 
as doctrine, speaking the truth with the King James Bible would be one of the leading online website resources. Now, Matt Slick writes, because of the prominence of the story of Peter and the rooster recorded in all four Gospels, the rooster or cock has, had, uh, has at times been used as the Christian symbol. Even some churches place the rooster atop their steeples. Used as a symbol, the rooster represents the weakness of man and the grace of Christ and forgiveness of sinners, because Peter three times denied his Lord and Savior, but he was forgiven, restored, and sent out to live the glory of God. The rooster reminds us that Christ extends hope to sinners everywhere. Yeah, that looks good on the surface, doesn't it? But he writes, the rooster used as a symbol can represent watchfulness. Before his arrest, Jesus prayed in the garden and asked his disciples to do the same. He goes on and on trying to say the rooster can be a symbol of Christians today. It's, it's ridiculous, people. Uh, do not. It's garbage. I'm not even going to waste my time explaining what he does. Uh, he's also saying that the rooster is proclaiming the start of a new day. Christ says all things are new. Forgiveness of sins. Don, da, da, da. A bunch of garbage. No, no. Let's stick with Scripture. We have to find the word, first of all, the word rooster is not used in the King James Bible, only in perverted Bible translations do we find it. So let's, first of all, set the record straight. You're probably thinking, why I'm making a big deal of this? Well, bear with me. First of all, the rooster is not, I repeat, the rooster is not a biblical symbol of the return of light after a night time. It's not showing us hope of a new day. It's not saying showing us God's grace. It is, however, a very prophetic symbol of denying Christ before the cock crows. I repeat, the rooster, is, what is known in the King James Bible as the cock, is a prophetic symbol of denying Christ before the cock crows. The King James Bible uses the word cock, as which is known, we also known as rooster, 11 times in its Strong's G220 in the Gospels, and all are referring to Peter denying Jesus Christ. The perverted Bibles use the word rooster. And they even have it like in Job, and some Bibles, perverted Bibles, have uh, the word rooster in the book of Job and in the book of Proverbs. However, these words do not mean rooster at all, but rather, here, look at Job, and it's H7907 uh, in the Hebrew, which means a dubious mind. Some, a mind that has a wild hedge around it. And in Proverbs, it's an unknown animal, but the King James, I believe, properly translates it as a lo slender loin-sided, like a greyhound. Now, we do, let's talk now about where the word cock is used in Scripture. Now, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 34, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. So Jesus is telling Peter, hey, before the cock crows, you are going to deny me three times. And Mark 14, 72, it is written, and the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. That's three times. And when he thought upon it, he wept. This is where I want to focus. I want to stay focused on Mark, the gospel according to Mark chapter 14, 72. Now, Mark writes about the second crowing. This is significant. This is a significant mention because since this is the pivotal point that exposes, completely exposes Peter's denial. And he recalls vividly that Jesus told him that before the cock crow twice, thou shalt, die, shalt deny me three times here. Now, we see that the original rooster, which was 
in the ashes, now rising, as they say, as the phoenix. They're rising it, raising it up here on the crane to put it on top of the spire. And we're going to talk about spires and domes and arches and all these things and these modern and all, all church buildings, even your simple little chapel. You have little pagan icons and symbols that are pagan. I'm going to show this to you. So we have, I think, a very, very profound sign here. I don't think this is a coincidence that before the rooster is raised again, now this is going to be the second crow. Now this is before the second crow, right? On the steeple of Notre Dame, and, and Notre Dame literally in English means Our Lady, all right, which is pagan in itself. And this is all Catholic Vatican stuff, okay? But I think this is a perfect prophetic sign that the Laodicean church has universally denied Jesus Christ by preaching another gospel, which the Laodicean church does, and by worshiping another Christ. Even so, come Lord Jesus, amen, Maranatha. I invite you to please see the extraordinary background material I have on this subject. Here in this link, brick-and-mortar church buildings are not biblical. This is a very intensive research study that was, that was done years, several years ago. And it goes in and breaks down an edifice and how the arches, how the pillars, how the spire represents a failing symbol of the male uh, sexual organ. The dome the bell tower, the bell tower is very pagan, going back to the Babylonian of the womb, a pregnant womb. It's all in there. Uh, these spires, wombs, it's all in there, bell towers. The purpose of this study is not for me to go into the brick and mortar church buildings or pagan, not biblical, come out from among them. Now, on this study, I want to connect the dots here. Open the link on the Vatican's Year of Peace, which I found is an ominous warning of end-time events. If you open this link back in August of 2013, I had posted this blog, and I'm going to scroll down here. There's some very, very interesting links here. But this, while I was living in Vietnam, there was a Catholic seminary down the road for me, and they had this very prominent, ominous, and it spiritually deeply bothered me, flag flying. And they had posters and, and the very placards around the town of stating that this was the year of faith. And this is stated, they did not have, they had year of faith 20, 2012, 2013 in English. Now, mind you, this is Vietnam. Everything else is in Vietnamese. And now, you can look at this yourself. Tell me what you see. Now, remember, Satan, everything is inverted. So flip this over. First, look at the IHS up here. Then you flip it over and tell me what you see. I see a, a spike or a nail, the nail, the nail in the cross. And this looks like a rooster's beak, eye in the comb here of the rooster, right? Now, this was years back. Remember, this is 10 years ago, people. I saw this and posted this blog. Now, if you see the sale, is this is actually Isis Horus set. This is all going back to the sign of the Jesuits who take it from very pure. This goes back to the Egyptian gods, the three. There you go, Trinitarians. There's your three gods in one. And this is all having the faith in the Catholic Church. Now, the Pope's Vatican year of faith, it's not about faith in God at all, but it's a, pro, it's a, it's a global proclamation about having faith in the Catholic Church. Go into the studies. I will not take the time about how the Vatican called uh, Pope John Paul as Petrus Romanus. How, and this is the time that the uh, 
Pope John Paul II on November uh, 24, 2013, how he had made a miracle, announced a miracle was going to happen. Uh, now, the Vatican announced this. Now, this was supposed to happen to Pope John Paul II. Now, uh, let's see, there's three blogs there's three blogs that i found in a video on this it's it's fascinating background i won't take the time to read it also study on and, and, and by the way i understand that pope john paul was not the pope on november 24 2013 but there was supposedly a miracle all connected all connected with the vatican calling on this miracle this year of faith and all of these very profound, demonic, actually, spiritual things that were happening within the occult. If you also look in the notes, the Isis, the Egyptian goddess of magic, the giver of life, Horus, the son of Isis, who became the sun god, notice the second person of the Trinity, God, the sun, and Set, the warrior god of the desert. Notice also, in your studies here, as you go through and read these links about back in, uh, let's see, hold on here, keep about how uh, Israel uh, sold a very prominent part of Jerusalem to the Vatican, and how the Vatican has always wanted to have the Last Supper Upper Room, known as that whole area on uh that that was supposedly part of king david's palace which is what the vatican believes is where the second where the last supper took place also see all of the connecting dots here about these this vatican declaring the cloud of resurrection and let's see there's one two three four links on that uh back in 2013 i had a lot of study i spent a lot of time looking at this and let's see, I won't go back into anything else here, but I do want to bring this up. When it comes to the rooster, I want to show you something. Uh, back, back in 2019, when the first Notre Dame had its fire, yeah, the fire happened back, I'm sorry, I said 2018, 19, it was 2019. So that's been four years ago over let's see going on five years ago when that fire happened and the vatican burned down it's all in my links here there was this woman who i thought was a devout christian sister in christ but later and she she had a very good study on how the rooster was found in the ashes and I thought that this woman was a genuine born-again Christian. She spoke in detail. She wouldn't let go of this rooster thing and how it's connected to the Catholic Church and the world-famous Gothic Cathedral of Notre Dame. Now, if you see this link, it's in a YouTube video. But a few days later, I found out that this same woman was involved in some very unsound biblical and, frankly, heretical demonic divination. This woman is bad, bad news. Now, in a loving way, I called her out because I thought, first of all, she was just walking in ignorance and blind ignorance, but or just she just didn't know better because she was excited about ex exposing things. But I found out she did not receive this at all, but came back and got really nasty, sent me something. It's been t almost 10 years ago. I can't remember exactly what she said, but I just blocked or I just got rid of it. But I later went back and thought about it, how this person could be so knowledgeable about the connections of this rooster, the Vatican, and the occult. She was fascinated with the occultic world that she believed. Later, I found out that God gave her special. Now, I'm not talking about a gift of discernment here, people. I understand that. But she believed that she had special divine uh, given uh, ability to understand the occult. Now, this transferred over, or I should say she crossed a very dangerous boundary 
a gray area boundary of discernment of what the occult is doing. She crossed over that threshold into the very occult itself, saying that she could understand and use it. Now, I'm not putting words in her mouth, but I'm just telling you that she crossed a line there. My point, what's my point? Why and how did this woman have such a knowledge of the rooster connected to the Catholic Church here and this Gothic Notre, Notre Dame fire of 2019? Let me just go down here. I'm going to go back to the Notre Dame fire itself. Now, when this fire happened in April 2019 here, Look at the fire going up. This is an actual, you can see the spire. Now, I've been to Paris a couple times. I spent a considerable amount of time there once. And this is always a must-go site is to see Notre Dame. I was there in 90, uh, 98, 99. But this spire, you can see, it's over all the rooftops of Notre Dame. The spire is massive. It's huge. This one up. And smoke, if those of you that remember that back in 2019, when this happened, I was immediately struck with the Protestant Reformation, before the Protestant Reformation, when a group of Christians were challenging the Catholic Church in the Vatican. And they were the Waldensians. I urge you to read this horrible account of how these Protestants running and fleeing from the Vatican had fled trying to resist Rome and were slaughtered into the tens of thousands, into the hundreds of thousands. Overall, not only the Waldensians, but all these Protestants. The accounts of the lamp in the dark and the associated studies of the, the, the its accounts show that some 60 million were slaughtered by Rome because they wouldn't bow to the Catholic Church. Now, the flames that went up burning these people alive, there were piles and piles, pairs and pairs, pyres and pyres built for these to burn. I was immediately, I recognized that and I thought, how symbolic. But anyway, I urge you to go into this link and study. I have it. This is all again my uh, the twin towers and the belfry and spire in the middle here. Notice you have the twin towers of Notre Dame again in French, which comes from uh, it uh, from Latin. Notre is the uh, first person uh, possessive pronoun. Our Dame is Lady, Our Lady, referring to Mary. The Twin Towers, think of that. Remember the Twin Towers in Washington, uh, New York City when the Twin Towers came down? But this spire is the Luciferian evil symbol, the male symbol, uh, going back to Babylon. Read that study I have on there. And then read on how the Notre Dame construction happened during 1163 and 1345. The Protestant group refusing to come under the rule of the Vatican where the Waldensians suffered, as I said, horrific persecution and tens of thousands of them personally, this, this one group of people were slaughtered. In 1509, now right during, uh, correction, in 1059, now right while this was being constructed, this Pope Nicholas issued this Episcopal uh, Paul, which is a bull, issued that that was aimed at this group. And throughout the next 600 years, the Vatican, the Catholic religion, ordered the massacre of these innocent Christians, and it's documented. And here's just, I'm not going to take time to read the whole thing. This is right out of the book that was accounts from the records. This was written in the 1800s of those accounts. Little children were torn from the arms of their mothers clasped by their tiny feet and their heads dashed against the rocks or were held between two soldiers, their quivering limbs torn up by main force. Their mangled bodies were then thrown on the highways or fields to be devoured by the beasts. The sick and the aged were burned alive. Some had their hands and arms and legs lopped off. 
fire applied to severed parts to prolong their suffering. Some were flayed alive, and it just goes on and on and on. Their fingers were removed. Their no nostrils were completely cut off. Some were emboweled. Their entrails were opened up, and they would throw a fierce cat in there and then hold the cat inside. Uh, it just sulfurous matches were placed under their fingers. It's just it's disgusting, the detail. Now, uh, one of the martyrs that during the time this evil pagan temple was being built called the cathedral all of this horrific suffering was going on now you can imagine now this is in my study the brick and mortar buildings are not biblical imagine back before the king james bible was written or the tyndale bible was written in english all the the word of god was uh, it was held by the catholic church the vatican locked in latin all the peasants and commoners knew was this massive, these massive, massive monolith buildings that were built with these huge high spires. They would, they, they were taught that's God's, it, that's God's house. They were awestruck. They would go in there and see these pagan, reprobate, evil, hell-bound, straight-to-hell demons wearing these garbs and robes of the pagan Babylonian fish god mitre, and they would think that this was God's house, God Almighty. The Only the remnant of true Protestants, they had manuscripts that were handed down and memorized by their teachers that would show them that the Catholic Church in their transubstantiation that they're calling the Pope the vicar of Christ. All of these false teachings of having to go to confessional, having to pay uh, intolerant, uh, having to pay the, uh, the, the comp person having to pay the penance or the, what's the word? I just drew a blank when they had, had to pay for their sins to be forgiven. When they would do all, when, hear all of these false teachings, they would go to their manuscripts that they had of God's word, and they were going, wait a minute, we don't see that in God's word. That's your, it's all in the book. Please read The Waldensians by J.A. Wiley. So when you look at this whole thing, I think that this is very, very prophetic. And again, we see all of these things coming together. Is it? Before the cock crows twice, the second time, will the Laodicean church, this is all types, shadows, and shapes of what's happening. The Laodicean church, they're denying Christ again. The problem is they're not Peter, are they? No, all the Laodicean church, that's all these false churches and false pastors and all of them, they're denying by their preaching another gospel, they're teaching another Christ. All of their religious doctrines of man and creeds, of their Trinity teaching, they're, they're using perverted Bible translations and all their false teachings. They will all come quickly to account for this. I pray if you're one in one of these churches, come out from among them. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.